Welcome back. Well, just a few more days till you get the opportunity to view a partial solar eclipse. On Monday, August 21st, the eclipse will be visible from any spot in the continental United States. Although some people are heading up to the Carolinas, I'm hearing, to get a closer look. Here with lots of information to prepare you for the great American eclipse, we welcome a an all-star panel, really. Brian Lane, Associate Professor of Physics at Jacksonville University. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Bharath Mathala, NASA, Solar System Ambassador. Good morning. Good morning. Eddie Whistler, he's Director of the Mosh Planetarium. Good to see you. Hey, thank you. And Dr. Arun Galani, Director of the Galani Vision Institute. Thank you, Melissa. Good to see you, Doctor. And uh, what are your questions about viewing the big eclipse next week? Give us a call at 549 549- 2937. Professor Lane uh, with JU. This is something anyone in the country can see next Monday, but some places are better than others, including Jacksonville, right? Yes. Yeah, so in Jacksonville, we are pretty fortunate to be on the 90% line. So if you think about uh, the eclipse comes from the moon coming between the Earth and the sun. So depending on where you are on the Earth, you see it at a different angle. So you're seeing a different amount of covered up. So it's not too far from us to get to the line of totality where you can see a total solar eclipse. But Mm -hmm. Jacksonville will see a 90% eclipse, which is still pretty good. Um, I like to refer to it as we'll be able to see a crescent sun, sort of like when you see a crescent moon in the sky. Pretty exciting. Uh, Let's talk to our NASA expert, Bharath. Uh, Can you describe a little bit what people will be able to see and why is South Carolina such a hot spot to go see this eclipse? Yeah, not only South Carolina, like we have 12 states starting from Oregon to West Coast, uh, uh, East Coast in uh, South Carolina. So the 12 states, anywhere those, in those 12 states you are there, you can see beautiful total solar eclipse. When it becomes completely like uh, after 99%, uh, like uh, completely obscured by the moon, you will see beautiful phenomena, like you are completely on the alien world. You have never seen in your life. You have not seen a total solar eclipse so far. You have never seen that it's completely alien world. You will see completely become dark. You will, I mean, slowly it becomes dark and then you can see some bright stars appear. You can see the diamond ring, the corona, all those beautiful phenomena you can see on a total solar eclipse. Pretty amazing. Now, let's talk for a minute, Eddie Whistler, about what the MOSH is doing to celebrate the eclipse over at You Direct the MOSH Planetary. Mm-hmm. What's on tap? Um, this Friday, as a matter of fact, and we, uh, I'm happy and sad at the same time to say that we sold it out. Right, ah. so it's not available anymore. It's as a hot an option. ticket. Yeah, it's a hot ticket. It's a hot subject, but it's part of a series that we're starting called Planetarium Night Live, and that happens every other month. And this is the first. This is the first episode of that. It's called the Big Cover Up, and <laughs> you know all things, all things uh, eclipse. We'll be talking about historical eclipses of importance. We'll be talking about the science of eclipses in general, and then the specifics of this eclipse with our audience. And we've pulled partners from the United States Postal Service and Action News and the NASA ambassadors, as a matter of fact. So. Wow. Now let's bring in Dr. Galani of uh, the Galani Vision Institute, uh, an amazing eye doctor here in Jacksonville. We want to protect our precious site. So what are your expert tips for how we should view this eclipse, doctor? First of all, Melissa, it's such an amazing event, a spectacular event to be seeing uh, as you're alive. Uh, makes us realize how small we are and not to complain about traffic in Jacksonville again. So, uh, <laughs> right, especially today. <laughs> today. Yeah. And uh, I think what's amazing about this is we get so excited about this phenomena that we forget that we are exposed to sunlight every day. So the external damage from the sunlight to our eyes is very well known, most common of which is cataracts which everybody has, and then we do cataract surgery and you see perfect. But the damage caused during eclipses from the rays of light because we are not protecting them, that can cause photochemical and then photothermal damage to the inner layer of our eye, the retina, and more importantly, the photoreceptors. That's like damaging the film of the camera. Now, what is important to realize is there is no pain when this is happening, and this may not be an immediate impact. So it could be a delayed impact when you realize you've damaged your eyes. So you have to make sure if you're watching this eclipse, make sure you're wearing these protective glasses that are ISO certified. And those are the only glasses that you must look through for while watching this phenomena. Yeah, you must use the glasses. It's, is it right to say that the downtown library will be giving them out on Monday? We're hearing that. Yes. yes. For people that need the glasses. And uh, lots of calls for our all-star panel on the great American eclipse. What are your thoughts and questions? 
800-259-2937. Ashley in Jacksonville Beach. Hey, Ashley, are you going to check out the eclipse? Yes, I am. Um, I had a, I think you kind of just answered my question. I was wondering the science behind the reason that, you know, the kids are being kept indoors between one and four. So just in general, being outside, I'm guessing any exposure from the sun rays is, is harmful. Okay, Monday. sure. Yeah, thanks for that question. Yes. So what you need to do that day is, again, it's more the excitement of the event that makes people forget that they are staring at the sun. And that's an important thing to remember. Children, adults, everybody. So exposure to the sun directly has a whole range of uh, light that we have from ultraviolet to radio waves. And that could be damaging to the inner layers of the eyes as the eyes focus to look at these rays. At any point of the eclipse, except when there is total, complete eclipse, solar eclipse, you must not look at the sun because even if it's corona or a portion of the sun has high intensity rays that can still blind people. So please be careful. Isn't it true as well during a partial eclipse, you notice the animals start to act a little differently? The, like the whole the whole vibe of planet Earth seems to shift a little bit. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, just be, just before the totality, it becomes like completely dark. And then the animals, even the birds, they try to go to their nests. And the animals you see in the barns, they go to the barn back. The cows go to the barns back. And then once the eclipse is over, they will come back again out of it. <laughs> so it's a confused state like for everybody, every animal or the birds. And oh, go ahead, Professor. Oh, oh, sure. In fact, uh, animal behavior during eclipses is something we haven't studied a whole lot of. There are some citizen science projects out there where people who are viewing the eclipse can take data about wildlife behavior to simple pictures, video, you know, jotting down observations um, to upload to uh, different servers so that scientists can pool all this data together and try to figure out how different species of animals react to the eclipse. What are your thoughts and questions about the Great American Eclipse next week? It's your chance to connect with our panel of experts here right now at 549-2937. Lowell is in Mandarin. Hey, Lowell, how are you? Doing great. Planning on heading to uh, South Carolina to be right in totality. And uh, it's just frustrating to hear that Duval County Schools is sort of blowing the science um, educational moment by putting all the kids on the buses instead of uh, using it as a teaching moment. Oh, you think they should not uh, bus the kids during the eclipse? No, I think they should have kept them around. I understand um, some schools in St. John's County are staying open and uh, inviting the kids in, bringing in science teachers, doing the right thing as far as this one educational moment. They wouldn't come around for quite a while. Okay, what about that, Eddie Whistler? Um, I guess there's a few ways to think about it. It's definitely unfortunate that the the peak of the eclipse in Jacksonville happens to be when a lot, a lot of schools are letting out. Yeah, um, exactly. But ours is kind of so if you're in South Carolina and you're in the path of totality, you are there for an event that is taking place over the course of at most two and a half minutes, right? Two minutes and 40 seconds is, if you're in the perfect spot. But here in Jacksonville, I mean, there will be, it's not like a, an event that you'll need to be a part of at a moment. If the peak of uh, our coverage is at 245, right there about, that's the easy round number to remember. But if you saw it 10 minutes before or 10 minutes after, you wouldn't notice too much of a difference. This is really an event that's happening for us since we're not in the path of totality, which I, you know, we haven't made that clear, maybe, uh, to everybody. But it's an event that happens over the course of over three hours. Um, mm -hmm. So it's something that you can take a look at, make some observations, come back to. And as a matter of fact, I'm a big advocate for parents and other people who are going to be educating kids to go out in the days before at about those times and make some observations. And here's some things to take some observations about. First off, the dimness or the brightness of the sky at that time. Um, also, uh, an opportunity here in Jacksonville, even though it's only a partial eclipse, Look at the shadows that are coming through trees. Trees are kind of natural pinhole cameras in a way. And on the day of, should we be lucky and not have any clouds in the way, um, you'll notice distinct differences in the ways that the shadows look. I don't want to give away any more than that because I want it to be a mystery. You can find <laughs> out for yourself. It is mysterious because, you know, 
it, it happens rarely for one thing. Uh, so that it, doesn't that build so much of the excitement? When can we next expect an eclipse like this? Yeah, the next one in the U.S. we can see in 2024, like 2024. <laughs> Not April, too far off at too all. Far, seven years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. The, uh, on April 8th. April 8th yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Uh, that, that eclipse in Jacksonville, from what I looked up, will be about 69 percent. Jacksonville doesn't have another eclipse of this magnitude until 2045. Oh my gosh. And what's the percentage on this? That will be 98 percent in the, Jacksonville. The one on wow. the 21st. Oh, no, no. The, on this year will be 90 percent. 90 percent. In another uh, uh, 20 odd years, it'll be 98 percent. Andrea in Mandarin. Go ahead, Andrea. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. So I just had a question for Dr. Galani about the eyes. If you don't have the glasses, how should you, like, what if you're out in your car during that time um, and you're not looking directly at the sun, but how should you think about uh, protecting yourself without the glasses? Thank you. Yeah, great question. Hi, Andrea. This is Dr. Galani. Uh, that question, I think, is uh, very prototype and important, especially for parents. So what you would do is, first of all, there are indirect ways of looking at the eclipse. These are called pinhole concepts. These are concepts like uh, Eddie just explained, you know, even looking through the trees. And uh, here's what, something funny. You can actually overlap your fingers uh, of both hands and create a pinhole effect. So indirectly on a screen about a meter behind that pinhole concept. Now, that is an effort. You're, the advantage is you're looking at everything indirectly. So you're seeing phases of the eclipse as they happen. It's surely not as enchanting as looking at it directly. But again, I repeat, directly you can only see with the safety glasses. So keep your eyes and gaze away from the eclipse while it's happening in Jacksonville in particular because we are not going to have a complete total eclipse. Right? That's the only time when you can look up and stare for that one minute. But nothing in Jacksonville, please. Mark on the west side. Hey, Mark, go ahead. Hey, I'm uh, I'm going to or I'm going to attempt to be one of these people to go up to uh, South Carolina to see the 100 percent. And I just it, it looks like everywhere is going to be clouded in. Unfortunately, does anybody have any uh, insight to what the weather will be uh, next Monday? Good question too. Yeah, the weather wise, as of now, it still shows thunderstorms, but uh, it may change. Like it's like still four days before that, but uh, we'll get one day before or two days before exact like timings where you can see. <laughs> so all along that path, you have to just uh, go and look for that uh, best spot and where the weather's clears. There are no thunderstorms. It's a chance. I mean, weather. So uh, I've seen some scientists or the eclipse chasers. They go all over the world and then suddenly they chase the, it, sure. yeah they go there for travel thousands of miles and then the clouds comes and they can't do anything. Oh. It's, yeah, have, it's, have any of you done that? Yeah. Chased an eclipse? No. No, but no. NASA will have live feeds of the total eclipse from various locations. So even if your location ends up being cloudy, you know, you can open up your, your laptop or your phone to watch these live feeds and they'll have them from different locations so you can watch the total eclipse even at different times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even in the clouds also, I mean, sometimes if there are clouds, still you can see some features like some darkness comes and then you can see some difference. So some a lot of people even during the clouds, they can see that cloudiness and then the darkness and then they can enjoy that. It's completely different from the, your regular seen. Ka Kathy in Mandarin. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Go ahead. Doing good. Just wondering one thing. When I was a little kid, we were told that if you wanted to look at the eclipse and you didn't have any special pinhole cameras or whatever, you could u view it by looking at a reflection in some still water, like a bird bath or something like that. Is that safe? Yeah, it's not safe. I mean, no. Uh, yeah, no, don't earlier, do that? Okay. Yeah, it's not safe. Don't yeah. recommend that. No, I don't. And again, indirect, meaning, you know, the pinhole effect and stuff like that, you can do that with a screen one meter behind that impact. Uh, most important thing is to see it indirectly, not a reflection of it, because just like snow, reflection may underestimate the damage that you're causing. Brian is along I-10. Hey, Brian, you still holding? Go ahead. I sure am. I sure am. Uh, I saw totality in 1991 in Mexico. And I remembered the effect on the shadows. And I don't want to give it away because your guest was wanting to keep that for a surprise. But I was trying to describe to my 14-year-old, and I was wondering if we were going to see that here in Jacksonville with a 90% level of uh, eclipse. No, the shadow, shadow bands, you have to be in the totality path. If you are in the totality path, you can see those shadow bands, not here in Jacksonville. Still, there is a 10% of the sunlight coming here, so you can't see, unfortunately. Calls from, oh, go ahead, Eddie. There's, uh, I, 
just to be clear what the uh, caller was probably talking about, he was in the path of totality and there is this uh, phenomenon called shadow bands that almost look like snakes uh, crawling across the ground. Um, I've heard uh, I've heard of kids like running up to these things who are in the path <laughs> trying to grab them. What I'm talking about in terms of the shadows that we can see is that the shadows uh, in Jacksonville are going to be like very crisp and sharp on the day of. So I gave it away. Um, <laughs> and so uh, you, j- observe for yourself. Go out the days before and see what the shadows look like. And if there's no clouds, then on the day of. You know, take a look at how those shadows look at about, you know, 2.30 to 3 o'clock. It's going to be exciting. And go to jacksecliptes.org for all the information you need about Monday's big, great American eclipse. What a great panel to explain it all. Dr. Galani, Arun Galani, director of the Galani Vision Institute. Eddie Whistler directs the Mosh Planetarium. Barath Mathala is a solar system ambassador for NASA. And Brian Lane, Associate Professor of Physics at JU. Gentlemen, thanks and enjoy the eclipse. Thank Thank you for having us. You too. We'll be right back.